Hi everyone, Kate here to start a new series and that is 100 life softening books. A couple months back I wrote that I was going to be doing this series and asked how people wanted it. Um, I could do one big condensed video or split it up and most people seemed like they wanted it split up. Uh, so I am here to start on this epic quest. I'm losing daylight though so I'm going to film the first two videos and then I'll come back another time to film the next. I kind of want to film them all in one go, but I also don't want it just to be dark and you can't see anything. Uh, so anyhow, here we go. Um, the first 10 are what I'm going to do in this one. And when I say life softening, I just mean books that kind of take the edge off a hard day and just make life feel better and are something that you can truly delight and relish and savor. Uh, so the first and also cheeky. I am counting something that's part of a series. I'm counting them as one. So we're just going with it. I'm making the rules for my own series and I'm excited to tell you about all of these books. Hopefully this will be a good resource for you if you are looking for some bookish comfort. The first book is the uh, Daughters of Arden series uh, by Lauren G. Warnamendi. And this series I fell completely in love with this year. Exile is the very first one. And this is a big retelling of the Maid Malene fairy tale, where she is locked in a tower to keep her safe um, when there is war in the country. And so Exile, um, you can guess, is going to be her exile to this tower. Then Wanderer is the second in the series where um, now that war has been in the country and she's dealing with the after effects of that and exactly how she can live and thrive and survive. And then the final one that I am currently reading is called Promise. And so now she is a refugee and seeing what her life is going to be like then. Um, just such a meaningful series full of um, kind of showing what it's like to survive through your worst nightmare and just written so beautifully. Uh, the next book is Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams by Susan Branch. I know many are big fans of a fine romance, but I just love this kind of underdog story of Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams. It starts out where it's this terrible, terrible time in Susan Branch's life. Her husband has left her for a younger woman and uh, she ends up moving and uprooting all the way from California to Martha's Vineyard and buys this little house and just kind of heals and puts back the pieces of her life together and ends up, her life ends up just so much better than it could have had she not gone through that trial. Uh, so I just love it. Um, I have read it yearly since I got it a couple of years ago. I think I'm going to reread it again this winter and um, just savor it all. Uh, the next one is the first three in the Anne of Green Gables series. I want to show you these covers um, because I love them so much. Controversial opinion. I think the Anne series would have been sheer perfection if it had actually ended after Anne of the Island. I think that these three books are so strong together. They are my favorite part of the series. Um, so Anne of Green Gables and then Anne of Avonlea and Anne of the Island. So I just really adore these. I am currently, I finished a reread of Anne of Green Gables and I'm going to then do a reread of Anne of Avonlea and I'll end with a reread of Anne of the Island. Um, I do know many people rave about Rilla of Ingleside. So at some point I will read Rilla, but just these are the three that have been such a highlight to me in this series. And uh, then the next one is, of course, I have to talk about the Betsy Tacy series, where you follow the adventures of Betsy Ray and her best friend Tacy ever since they are five years old until when they are adults and get married. I love that this series grows with the reader. I love that Betsy is a clearly flawed character, but who is always trying to do better and improve and grow uh, for the better. And I love that you get to follow her as she's growing up and figuring out how to be an adult and figuring out how to be a good friend and family member. And they are funny. They are winsome. They are engaging. They are dynamic. I just, it's my all time favorite series ever. Uh, so if you are sad because you have run out of Anne books, please, please, I implore you try the Betsy Tacy books. The older ones are consistently better than the later in the Anne books, but that is my opinion. Uh, 
Then the next one is Adam of the Road. I first read this adventurous middle grade story uh, for the first time in 2023, this year, and I loved it. You're following Adam, uh, and it's set in medieval England, and I just love this traveling from place to place, following him through all his adventures kind of plot that you have going. It's just incredibly satisfying to read and um, follow Adam and get to see kind of what is going to happen to him. The next one, the next life softening book in a kind of similar vein to me is The Door in the Wall by Marguerite D'Angeli. And this one is so incredibly cozy. I love all of the details. There's some cloistered life details that happen. There is a boy who uh, a certain injury happens to him. And so he is taken in um, in a monastery and they take care of him and they uh, end up having to go on a journey at some point though, once he gets stronger. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful story. I love um, how immersive Marguerite D'Angeli's writing style is. And it's one that I definitely want to return to. It is also excellent on audio. And then the next one is a series and it is the Vanderbeeker series by Karina Young Glaser. And I love this series. It is the most to me out of a new series. It is the most classic feeling fiction. I couldn't believe it. With each book that I read, I thought, surely this series can't continue to be amazing. So it finally concluded with its seventh book this year. And I just adore the Vanderbeeker family. Um, there are five kids in the Vanderbeeker family. They all have very distinct personalities. They all have different uh, vices and virtues. They have different things that they're passionate about. And I love seeing just how much this family cares about each other and how they, the lengths that they will go to for each other. I also love the uh, urban setting. That's not common in children's fiction. Um, and so I love the kind of close-knit community that they are a part of. And sometimes it is a bit of rose-colored glasses looking at city living. Um, or maybe it was just my city living experience just happened to be very different. Either way, I can't recommend this series enough. I love it so much. The next one is the Paddington series. Uh, by Michael Bond. I am just so cheered up whenever I read one of the Paddington books. Paddington Bear is from darkest Peru and he comes to live with this British family and goes on all sorts of adventures and gets into all sorts of scrapes. But you know that everything is going to turn out okay in the end. Paddington is in a very safe world and I just love this series. So I can't recommend it enough for young or old. Then the next one is the Beatrix Potter Mystery Series by Susan Wittig Albert. These are incredibly endearing where you get to know both humans and animals alike. It follows Beatrix Potter when she bought Hilltop Farm and her life living in that small community. And also as the animals are getting to know Beatrix, the local animals living in the Lake District as well and on Hilltop Farm. Um, so it is very low in violence. Some people hear, you know, a murder mystery series and they're worried maybe it's not for them, but it's very low stakes kind of violence and the crimes are always um, kind of a minor detail of the books. Then the next one and the last one for this video is Jim the Boy. This is such a special, special book. It is not going to be this super shiny, in your face, overt plot but it has got such heart to it. And Jim is the heart of the book. You're following Jim as he is trying to figure out his place in the world. And it's set in the South of the United States and it's during the Great Depression. So people really, really had to be tough then. Um, and also what I think is really tactfully dealt with is kind of segregation era, um, Southern US and showing how, um, not everyone that lived there felt the same way and showing the complexities of that and showing that people can have kind of a wrong belief about certain things, but still have other things about them that can be good and um, things that they are trying to do well. So we all have our blind spots and it's just done really well. And the sequel, The Blue Star, is just as good, if not better. So such a special little duology. All right, that is the first 10 in my uh, 100 life softening books series. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe found one that you had not yet read and I will be back with another video soon. Bye!